Hi, this is Dr. Emily Sherning with AR. I'd like to say hello to all of our friends in North Dakota. As we get going, I want us to remember the promise of the regional forecast we checked out for the Northern Great Plains, increased agricultural production, and the hope of a very bright future. We've already looked at the state level data for Nebraska and South Dakota, and we saw some hope there. As we get into it for North Dakota, we're gonna see challenges, we're gonna see changes, but keep your eyes open for opportunity because there's gonna be a lot of it. First, we're gonna check out the projected changes to the seasons as we work to get an idea of how the growing season will shift. To figure that out, let's start by checking out changes to the summer. So we're gonna look over at the USDA heat map for our first piece of information on this. This shows the number of days over 86 degrees based on historical data from the 80s to 2009. And we can see that North Dakota usually has about 45, some areas with maybe 60 days over 86, northern part of the state, more like just a month over 86. As we look towards mid-century under the RCP 4.5 scenario, which represents a pretty modest doable reduction in emissions, we can see that there are big changes coming. This yellow color represents 90 days, up to 90 days over 86, and that'll be in most of the state with some areas up here expecting 60 and at the very tip, the very northern edge of the state, 45 over 86. It's a big change. It's like a doubling of the summer or more, but there are some states looking at up to a three month increase in heat within your region. So this isn't so bad, relatively speaking. And I feel like this is a case where it's worth taking a minute to zoom out and looking at the change because this sort of slaty blue, blue climate that you have in North Dakota, we used to see that it's, it's already vanishing today, all the way down south into Iowa, where I live now, that's where I am. And that whole climate is, is going away very dramatically. I want to show you the regional view, even under a reduced emission scenario. It's retreating to the tips here of uh, Minnesota and uh, Wisconsin. And that's pretty much it in terms of the whole heart of the country. So with these relative changes you're looking at in North Dakota, when you look at it in the perspective of our larger, big sort of agricultural basket there, you can see it's not such a bad picture. But, you know, 86 degrees, that figure we just looked at there, that shows you 86. It doesn't show you if it's going to be 88 degrees or 105 degrees. And that's a big difference, both in terms of what you're going to be able to do in the summer and how it's going to feel. So let's get some info on here, both historical and projected. The first thing that I want to do is look at the number of hot days over the last century, just for a second in North Dakota. And we can see some spikes here. It hasn't been so bad recently. We haven't had a lot of very hot days in the state in the last 20, 30 years, but we can see there was a big spike in the 80s and there was a really bad spike of hot days in the 30s. And that gives us some insight as we look at this next figure which shows our projected changes in very hot days, our projected changes in days over 90 as we look at mid-century under RCP 4.5. We're expecting to see, looks like about 15 to 20 days, maybe 20 to 25 days in the southern part of the state, just 10 to 15 in the northern part of the state, more of those very hot days. But if we're looking at that to baseline, that means that your typical summer is going to be more like summers that are within the historical record, that are going to be like those terrible hot spikes in the 30s and like the 80s. And also this figure gives us an illustration for why we need to get some emissions down to keep the promise of increased productivity going in this region. You can see that Nebraska is going to get too hot for ideal growth if we allow emissions to remain where they are. But I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent there, my apologies. It's nice to see that with those four additional uh, weeks over 90 that you could be looking at in the summer within the context of that longer, hotter summer, it's not necessarily gonna be outside of historical norms. It lets us look at the local heritage, local stories for how bad an extended heat like that is gonna get so that we can prepare. 
Also, this gives us warning. We know that the energy infrastructure in North Dakota isn't used to dealing with that kind of cooling power demand. We haven't seen it for 40 years now, since the 80s. So this is a warning that the infrastructure tune-up is gonna be very important for the state's future. We can see if we look back to that figure, we're gonna be able to look at the change in the number of days below 28. So let's look at that, our loss of freeze back here in the National Climate Assessment. In North Dakota, we're looking at um, 20 to 25 days less below 28. And we know that in North Dakota, we've also noticed in the last 50 years, a reduction in the number of really cold days, like the minus 40 days. So putting this together, the increased summer, the decreased freezing days, we're probably looking at a three to four week increase in this growing season, about another month of productive growing time. From the decrease in days below 28, we're probably looking at impacts on plant hardiness zones too. Let's check that out. We have another USDA tool to look at for that. Also using data from the 80s to 2009. And as we've mentioned, we know that the 80s are kind of an outlier decade, right? We had like really a lot of heat in the 80s. So we should expect that to be showing upper edge for North Dakota under the RCP 4.5 scenario, really giving us threshold data that helps us to prepare. So if we look towards mid-century, we do see a shift here in that we're going to be losing this very cold zone three winter. We're moving almost entirely to zone four. So contemporary, we see a split between uh, zone three agricultural zone and zone four as we move towards mid-century, almost all zone four. Well, you and I both know that a zone four winter is still pretty cold though. With those big summer increases, we're probably talking about a bigger total swing in temperatures over the course of the year than we have right now in a typical year. Those big changes, they often mean big storms. North Dakota is no stranger to big storms. The lightning and thunderstorm damage to North Dakota's grid are consistently the most intense in the nation and the historical data. When we see this range of yearly temperatures get bigger, we know the storms are likely to get bigger too. And since we're gonna have the increased summer heat, we know we need an infrastructure tune up. This lets us see how crucial it's going to be to have locally repairable energy sources within our communities and homes in North Dakota. Taking a step back, all this info is definitely putting together a picture of a year that will feel different, but not as different as in some parts of the country. For one thing, you're keeping a four season environment and you're probably looking at a cool enough summer to prevent crop failure due to heat. You are looking at a fair number of additional days over 90 as you get towards mid-century, but you're likely to stay closer to 95 than 105 for the vast majority of those days. And that's a fairly positive outlook, but it's not enough info on its own because you need water for production, right? We just looked at Idaho's forecast a few weeks ago and you know their temps are staying in good growing range, but they're looking at a very challenging water outlook with peak stream flows for them projected to shift from July to March. Let's keep going. Let's keep thinking about storms and continue our weather outlook and see what info we can put together for your precipitation trends. So if we come back here to page 945, we can look at the change in number of days with precipitation exceeding an inch projected by the mid 21st century. So those are your number of days of deluge type rain, big flooding rain. And we can see that there's relatively small changes, looking at more like half a day, right? Small change in your probability across North Dakota with higher probability of major flooding rains as we get into the southeast corner here. That's important to consider as we look at the fact that we're having projected increases in rain by mid-century. And I want to show you that. In the national uh, state climate level forecasts, we're able to see that in the winter, North Dakota is going to see more precipitation and it's still gonna be such a cold winter that it'll fall as snow, right? 10% maybe in the Western half, 15 in the Eastern half. And I'll show you another figure here that in the spring, we can expect about a 15% increase in total precipitation. That can make it challenging for planting, right? 
but it's not as bad if you're looking at fairly small regular amounts of precipitation than if you're looking at major flooding events where it's going to take the soil a longer time to dry out. So that's some pretty nice news in your precipitation forecast. There's such a big drying in the West that seeing an increase in precipitation is going to be positive, especially with those hot temperatures that are forecast for the state, where you're going to have higher soil moisture needs and higher moisture needs for your plants. But it's worth noting that we do expect there to be drought years and deluge years in the future, a fair amount of variation from year to year. So improving water storage in North Dakota, it's already crucial in the dry plains environment. It'll be even more so in the future. You're building on pretty good aquifer health though. The aquifers in North Dakota are very well monitored and we know there was a lot of aquifer use for irrigation just last year in 2021. State officials say that even considering that dry high use year, we're still in a good position for sustainable aquifer draw. I don't wanna minimize the challenges that many ranchers have been experiencing where shallower wells that are used for livestock have been going dry, but that doesn't indicate a problem in the deep aquifer health. They are healthy. They're not the hardest in the nation to recharge either. You got a fairly porous water table. So in deluge years, the more we can encourage that water to get back into the ground, the better and better the long-term water outlook is for North Dakota. Circling back around, if we can stay on the RCP 4.5 pathway, this could all be good news for agricultural productivity. We are projected to approach those historic high temperatures from the 30s and 80s on the regular by mid-century, but there won't be many years that exceed that sort of historical memory for the climate, and we're very likely in North Dakota to stay in the temperature margin for successful grain fill. That additional precipitation, there's a real hope, a fact-based hope, that it by and large won't be so overwhelmingly deluge-style rains as to damage the soil. North Dakota is our current largest producer of pulse crops. Pulse is mean protein, and as many people move towards plant-based protein, North Dakota is where it comes from. North Dakota also leads on organic pulses, and this is an interesting case study in how the heartland is going to be taking agriculture from California. California used to lead in pulses, but as the climate has already begun to change, North Dakota has completely taken that over. And I want to show you uh, a little example of that takeover if we go back to the National Climate Assessment. We can see there's been a lot of land conversion, and this is historical data. We don't even know what's been going on in the last 10 years from this data. But previously, North Dakota had converted 220,000 acres from grassland and wetland in the Prairie Pothole region to staple crop production. And if we look at where that's been concentrated, we can see that a fair amount of the land conversion is in this southeast corner where we do expect there to be the highest probability of drenching rains. I talked about this land conversion challenge in some depth in my South Dakota forecast. It also is critical for North Dakota. There's an important balance to strike here. Just like in the South Dakota forecast, we don't just need this habitat for staple crop production. We need that grassland wetland habitat for duck production. If you want to hunt ducks anywhere in the U.S., you folks make all the good ducks right there in the Prairie Pothole region. When we connect not only that habitat need, but also our land use needs to our aquifer health, which is totally crucial for our long-term agricultural ag output, and to our soil health, which we know the soil can be damaged by overly heavy rains, we see how the land use balance is, is critical for the producer. Finding ways to maintain the wetlands so that we can avoid flooding, recharge aquifers, help prevent soil degradation, and maintain duck production, they're all going to help this state maximize its potential, not just for agriculture, but for hunting and recreation and cultural opportunities too. <laughs> Pulling it together, North Dakota is looking at changes, but these changes, if we can get on and stay on the RCP 4.5 pathway, they're very likely to net increases for the state on many levels. And this state is where the summers are gonna stay cool enough for the staple crops we may need the most, protein rich staple crops. At this point, North Dakota, so many of your cards are landing just right. You gotta prioritize conserving your soil. It's gonna be so precious to us all. 
get enough habitat interlaced in those agricultural areas to keep up your pollination, your aquifer recharge, and, and so on, your duck production, your cultural opportunities. But these are challenges you can do. You can do it and you are looking at so much opportunity. This is Dr. Sherning with AR signing out. Please like and subscribe, help get the message out there. There is hope. We can prepare for what's coming. Let's get ready.